So we've been testing the new MacBook Pros and we found five interesting discoveries that you should definitely know about. Number one, the slow SSD. So based on the benchmarks that we did in yesterday's video, we discovered that the base 14-inch MacBook Pro, the 512 gigabyte model, was considerably slower than the old base model, 512 gigabytes once again. So as you can see, based on these graphs, even though the write speed was similar, the read speed was significantly different, with the newer model being almost two gigabytes per second slower than the old one. So we promised you guys that we would be testing this further to see exactly what was happening, and we tested the 16-inch model as well, again, this is the base 512 gigabyte, to see if the issue would be the same. And guess what? It was. We then also tested the 16-inch one terabyte model, the one with the M2 Max, and as expected, this one did not have the issue. So it turns out that the slower SSD problem only applies to the base models of both the 16-inch and the 14-inch MacBook Pros. Now, if you guys remember the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 13-inch MacBook Pro, the base model, so the 256 gigabytes, they used a single SSD modular rather than two at rate zero, which resulted in half the speeds on that 256 baseline model. But once you upgrade to 512, that's when they would use two SSD modules and therefore double the speeds. So could it be that Apple's only using one SSD module in these baseline 512 gigabytes MacBook Pros? Well, we actually opened them both up and uh, we discovered something very, very unexpected. So on the 14 inch, as you can probably tell, we only have one NAND chip. So just one SSD module, just like on the base M2 Air and the base 13-inch MacBook Pro. So sadly, the issue is confirmed on the 14-inch. But on the 16-inch, it gets very strange because we actually have not one, but two chips. But the 16-inch is also affected by this issue. So what's, what's going on? Well, we decided to also take our M2 Max apart and we found out that uh, the SSD module, so the NAND chips, actually have different model numbers. If you take a look at the ones inside the uh, M2 Max model, we have text on both the top and the bottom. However, if we take a look at the ones inside the base 14 and 16 inch, so the M2 Pro versions, uh, they only have text on the top. So it seems like Apple's definitely using different NAND chips on the M2 Max compared to the M2 Pros, and not just a different number of them. However, we don't yet know why the 16 inch with two modules is just as slow as the 14 inch with one module. So if you have any ideas, uh, let us know down below in the comments, because honestly, this is a very weird one and we just cannot explain it, aside from maybe Apple using lower quality chips inside the 16 inch as compared to the 14 inch for whatever reason. But indeed, if you want the best SSD performance, you now need to upgrade to the one terabyte model, which is very disappointing to see, especially on a pro device. Now, in all honesty, three gigabytes per second read and write is still very, very good. However, considering that that's a downgrade from five, which is what we had last year, uh, well, that's not great, as this will also affect swap memory speeds. In real world usage, as we saw in yesterday's video, uh, it did actually affect Lightroom performance, more specifically the import time, but other than that, we didn't really see any major difference as we weren't really pushing the RAM to its limits, which is when swap memory would be used. So yeah, in most cases you'll be fine, but it's still disappointing to see that it's a downgrade from last year. Also keep in mind that if you want to get one terabyte, you have to pay $200 or 200 pounds more, uh, which outside the US is going to cost you even more than that, as the MacBook Pros themselves are more expensive. In the UK, for example, the 14 starts from £2,149 compared to £1,899, so it is £250 more, and if you want to get an upgraded SSD, it's going to be £450 more than the 2021 model. Now, the second thing that we discovered was in terms of the cooling system. More specifically, we compared the base 16-inch with the M2 Pro against the M2 Max model, as in the past, the Max model had a superior cooling system uh, compared to the M1 Pro. In fact, there was also a considerable weight difference between between the M1 Pro and M1 Max last year, uh, 2.1 kilograms compared to 2.2 on the M1 Max because of that beefier cooling system. But this time, it's a bit stranger. You see, the M2 Pro is heavier than the M1 Pro from last year at uh, 2.13 kilograms compared to 2.1. So this could mean that we do get a newer cooling system on the M2 Pro model. But then the M2 Max um, is 2.18 kilograms, which is actually lighter than the M1 Max. So does this mean that the cooling system has received a downgrade on the M2 Max? Well, I took all of these apart and between the M2 Pro and M2 Max, I couldn't really notice any difference in terms of the cooling system at all, aside from the slightly larger heatsink on the M2 Max chip, of course, due to the larger chip size. And when it came to the difference between the M1 Max and the M2 Max cooling system, 
The biggest difference, which could explain that weight difference, is that the heatsink now only covers uh, the chip, whereas before it also covered the memory modules. So will this affect the actual performance? Well, we're going to test that in just a bit, but first, I've noticed something else that was quite strange. The M2 chip runs at 3.5 GHz, but then the M2 Max runs at 3.7. This is just for one core, by the way, but it is interesting how the M2 Max can run 200 megahertz higher than the M2 Pro, despite these chips being identical in terms of the core counts. And I've also had a look at the temperatures using TG Fan Pro uh, during Cinebench, and the M2 Pro got to 101 degrees, whereas the M2 Max got a tiny bit hotter to 102. So yeah, even though the M2 Max is a larger chip with more cores, which outputs more heat, it seems like the cooling system performs just as well as with a smaller uh, M2 Pro chip. Now, here's a very interesting one. At number three, we have the 16-inch MacBook Pro speakers. We've noticed that the speaker itself was actually noticeable underneath the speaker grills on our 16-inch M2 Max Space Gray MacBook Pro, which wasn't visible at all on the 2021 Space Gray model. We've also tested the base M2 Pro 16-inch in Space Gray, and uh, it was also noticeable on this, although not as bad as on the M2 Max. So could this be a change that Apple made to, I don't know, improve the speaker quality, or is this some sort of manufacturing defect? Yeah, I got the juice like a snow cone. Ice in my veins and a cold flow. I'm getting cash overseas by the boatload. You wanna ride my wave? That's a no-go. Senoritas going no go. Make it bounce like a pogo. All my haters see rojo. They big mad cause they're coming up short like Frodo. I mean, to be honest, the new model actually sounded a bit better. It was about two decibels louder. Uh, and everything had a bit more punch to it. So it seems like, I don't know if this was intentional or if it's just our unit, but yeah, the new model definitely sounded a bit better than uh, the 2021 model. Then number four, we've also discovered a couple of changes in terms of the box. Two changes to be more specific here. The first one is the wallpaper, which is new compared to the 2021 model box. But in fact, uh, if you look closer, you'll probably notice that it's, well, it's, it's the same wallpaper, uh, just a different color, which doesn't actually match the one that's on Apple's website, the Apple Store page which is very strange because they've always matched in the past. So what could be the reason for this? Well, we don't really know, but if, if I could guess, I would say that based on the rumors that uh, the MacBook Pros were supposed to launch in October 2022, I think the initial plan was for Apple to have the wallpaper that's currently on the box, but then they realized that, I don't know, it was too bland, so they decided to change it, and they just didn't have enough time to update the boxes to the new wallpaper, which is what we have currently on the website. And uh, if you update to the latest macOS version, you would also have that on your Mac. And the second box change is that instead of the usual plastic wrap that we've had, well, for quite some time now, Apple has now updated that with just pull tabs, uh, which are way more eco-friendly. And now and these boxes match the opening method that we have on the iPhone boxes and the iPad boxes as well. And at number five, we now have the confirmed release dates for these MacBook Pros. And what I essentially mean by this is that, um, you know those rumors that these MacBook Pros were supposed to launch in October 2022? Well, we have even more proof towards that. If you take a look at the labels on the boxes, they show 2022. And if you look a bit higher up on the MacBook Pros, it says November 2022 to be more specific. And on the Mac Minis, it says October 2022. This combined with all the previous evidence that the 2022 uh, date was mentioned in the Apple event link, uh, then the Ian Zelbo AR files for the new Macs, those were compiled in October 2022. All of this confirms that, yes, Apple was indeed aiming to have an October event for the iPad Pros, the MacBook Pros, the Mac Minis, and the new HomePod, but for some reason they decided not to and just release all of these uh, via press releases instead. But why was that? Well, my guess is that chip shortages or manufacturing issues uh, were the reason why they were delayed. January would have been the only option for Apple to ship these, and they decided not to announce them as it would really have made any sense to announce them in October, but only release them in uh, January. Reason why they had press releases for uh, everything. I guess the best news for us consumers is that we get to see a 2023 in the about page instead of 2022. But yeah, if you're interested in purchasing any of these, uh, check out the YouTube shoppable cards below. There are some great deals on these new MacBooks and the old models as well. Check out our full benchmarks video and also stay tuned for uh, the M1 versus M2 Max video as well as the Mac Mini comparison. I'm Daniel Timmy's enough tech and I'll see you guys in the next one. So enough deck, signing out. Cheers.